Is it possible to physically feel the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit? It absolutely is. And I'm going to show that to you from the scripture. But more importantly, as we look at this truth revealed in scripture, your faith will be stirred. And it's my prayer that by the end of this message, that you would sense the touch of the Holy Spirit's power on you. Whether it's been years since you've sensed that touch, or whether you've never sensed that touch before, I believe that, that tangible power of God is present to transform your life. I'm going to show you what the scripture says on this matter, and then we're going to pray. And when we pray, I believe that as you join your faith with mine, that you will have an encounter in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. First, we look to the scripture. Acts chapter 17, verse 27 says, that they should seek the Lord, if perhaps they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any one of us. God is not a million miles away. He's right next to you. Whether you sense him or not, whether it's been a while since you've thought about him or not, this is the reality. He's looking at you right now. He's listening to you right this very moment. He is in the room with you right now. There's an old story about an evangelist by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth was staying in the home of a family while he was preaching a revival locally in their town. The wife was saved, the husband was not a believer. During that revival meeting, the husband and wife agreed to give the man of God their room. So he slept in their bed well, they slept in the next room. Each night he would go and preach that revival and then come back and sleep in that bed. Finally, the revival came to an end. The wife had been praying for the husband. She had been hoping that he would attend one of the meetings. He didn't. She had been hoping that he would have an encounter with God. He didn't. And so Smith Wigglesworth begins to leave their home. He leaves out the front door, begins to walk down the street, and the wife goes chasing after him. She calls out to him and she says, please wait, my husband isn't saved. Can you pray for him, minister to him, something? As the story goes, without even missing a step, Smith Wigglesworth slightly turns his head to call back to her. A simple instruction he gave, don't change the sheets. An odd instruction indeed, but the woman obeyed. By faith, she obeyed the instruction of God's servant. And so that night, the husband and the wife went to bed. The wife did not change the sheets. That night, the husband began to have nightmares about the afterlife, specifically about hell, about sin, about the judgment of God. He hopped out of bed, fell to his knees, and cried out for God's forgiveness became a born-again believer. What exactly happened there? It was the tangible touch of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You see, there is a tangible element to the power of God. The power of God can manifest in a physical way. In our meetings all the time, people report feeling electricity or heat or weight come upon their bodies while they're experiencing a miracle healing or some other form of breakthrough that God is giving to them. This is the reality. The power of the Holy Spirit has a tangible aspect to it. Now, looking to the scripture for examples, let's first go to 2 Kings chapter 13. Then Elisha died and was buried. Groups of Moabite raiders used to invade the land each spring. Once when some Israelites were burying a man, they spied a band of these raiders. So they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled. But as soon as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. Now, before we continue to look at other examples of the tangible power of the Holy Spirit in Scripture, it's important that we remember this. It's not the object itself, it's not the man or the woman themselves that produces the power. The power comes from the Lord and this is the way that he chooses to sometimes operate. Let's go now to Acts chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse number 15, another great example 
of the tangible touch of God. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. In Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, the Bible says, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. In Mark chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. In Mark chapter 5, we see the example of the woman with the issue of blood. She came up behind Jesus, reaching out in faith, and touched the fringe of his robe. And when she did, she felt within her body immediately that she had been healed. Verse 30 says, Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. Jesus could actually feel the power leaving his physical being. In James chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible tells us this, Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. So here we see an example of the use of oil, the New Testament example of the use of oil. We understand there's no power in the oil, but God chooses to use the oil when we respond to his word in faith, the tangible touch of the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 gives us another example of what can happen with the tangible touch. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. So here we see that a spiritual gift was imparted by the laying on of hands. Something happened through the realm of the physical. This is how God chooses to move in many instances. Now, to balance this point, let's look at Acts chapter 8, verses 19 and 20. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. In that portion of scripture, we see that Simon the sorcerer offered to buy the power of the Holy Spirit, and he was sharply rebuked for it. His motives were impure. Even though there's a tangible touch to the Holy Spirit's power, even though the power of the Holy Spirit can sometimes be physically manifested, doesn't mean that we should ever offer it for sale. You cannot buy the anointing. You cannot sell the power of the Holy Ghost. And if anyone ever offers you for sale the anointing or a touch of God or anything that's spiritual that should be given away for free, you run from that because that is sorcery. Now, having said that, I know that this is a reality. Even though there are those who will take advantage of this reality, even though there are those who will pervert this truth, we must still look to the scripture as our guide. And the scripture makes it absolutely clear that there is a tangible element to the power of the Holy Spirit. I myself have experienced this in many instances. It's my prayer that you would experience this. There have been times when I'm praying that I can sense pulses of the Holy Spirit's power moving up and down my body. Sometimes it's when I'm praying. Sometimes it's when I'm ministering. In fact, I have several stories of people being able to sense that power around me, not because of me, but because of who's around me. In fact, there was one instance where I was attending a Bible conference. I wasn't speaking at this Bible conference. I was just attending it. So I took my Bible and I placed it on a seat to hold my place. Well, I left that there and I went to go get a drink of water or something like that. And when I came back, there was this girl in our youth group who had my Bible. She says, oh, here you go. You left your Bible. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I put that on the seat to save my seat, but um, that's okay. So I, I, I graciously took it. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And she said, can I tell you something? I said, sure. She began to explain that when she picked up the Bible that I had left on the seat, that she felt like a tingling sensation come from the Bible and move up her arms. She said it felt like, like electricity, and she said it was a rush of something she had never felt before. That was the tangible touch of God. And that's just one of many stories that I could share with you about the tangible touch of the Holy Spirit's power. So, we see it today. 
We see it in the scripture, and I pray you would experience it now. Now, let me say this, lest anyone become discouraged. Our part is to have faith. God's part is to respond as he wills. He is sovereign. We can position ourselves to receive from the Lord, but only he really decides what we encounter. So I don't want you leaving this experience if you don't experience what you want to experience by thinking that there might be something wrong with you or by thinking that perhaps there's some great spiritual assault on you that's keeping you from experiencing the touch of God. That's not really what's happening. In fact, it's just the sovereignty of God. But I do believe that there will be many who experience God's power right here, right now. I want you to believe. Set aside negative thinking, set aside doubt, set aside cynicism, set aside the victim mentality that says, woe is me, God never listens to me, bad things only happen to me. Let's just focus on Jesus and let's position ourselves right now to receive from the Lord as he wills. And again, I believe that that power is gonna begin to flow. In fact, I can sense it flowing even now. And I believe you're going to encounter the tangible touch of his power. Get ready. Close your eyes, lift your hands, think only about Jesus now. So Father, I pray in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, that that one receiving this prayer would experience the tangible touch of your power. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you right now are beginning to sense like a heat on you. Others are sensing like an electricity. Others are sensing like a weight. In fact, there's also someone who's sensing like waves, almost like waves of water. I thank you, Lord. Many encounters will be different. Just, just say to the Holy Spirit that you want to surrender to whatever he wants to do. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this power now flowing. I give you the glory. Father, let them sense you in the room with them now. Holy Spirit, make your presence known. Touch them, I pray. Wow, this is beautiful. Touch them, I pray, Lord. I give you the glory for every encounter that's happening now. I give you the glory for every life being transformed in your presence. Let that power that is present here flow through my hands, right through that camera, and from any device that they're receiving this on. Lord, let it fill their room. Let it fill their homes. To touch their family, their loved ones, their children, anyone present with them anyone present in that household. Thank you for healing and delivering and setting free and empowering. Just close your eyes. Child of God, just close your eyes and think about Jesus. See him seated at God's right hand now. Lightning flashes before him, the I Am. Eyes of fire, hair white like wool, face shining as the sun. Speaking with the voice, it sounds like many waters. He's reaching out to you now. Reach back by faith, receive that touch. glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, if you enjoyed this teaching and you know that there are others who could benefit from this teaching, then do me a favor to help us spread this. I, it sounds almost a little odd, me asking in this context, but really it's for a good purpose. Would you please leave a like on this video so that others can receive this as well? And let me know in the comment section what you encountered. 
you haven't done so already, be sure to also subscribe to Encounter TV. There's a lot of teaching like this, and I believe you'll go from glory to glory as you receive from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And also, if you want to get involved and help us take the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through the preaching of the gospel, you want to get involved with helping us to release this content and do the live streams and host the events around the world, well then here's how you can get involved. Here's how you can make an impact. Here's how you can help us win souls and build believers. Go right now to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner and sign up to become a monthly ministry supporter of this great work that God is doing. This evangelistic healing ministry is touching lives all around the world. Go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. You can sign up to become a monthly ministry supporter, or you can go to our website and also just give a one-time gift. But whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, knowing that this is going to help us reach more people with the gospel. Now, if you enjoyed this teaching, then you will enjoy four ways to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit.